another issue that is so personal to me is the devastating history of the U.S. government's boarding school policies. Like many of you, I was, I was deeply impacted by the news of 215 Indigenous children found in a mass grave at a boarding school in Canada. I couldn't help but think of their families. Each of those children is a missing family member, a person who was not able to live out their purpose because forced assimilation policies ended their lives too soon. I thought of my own child who carries this generational trauma with them. I thought of my grandmother who told me about the pain and loneliness she endured when the trains took her away from her family to boarding school. I wept with the indigenous members of our team here at Interior. Our communities are still mourning. The federal policies that attempted to wipe out native identity, language and culture continue to manifest in the pain our communities face, including longstanding intergenerational trauma, cycles of violence and abuse, disappearance of indigenous people, premature deaths, mental disorders and substance abuse. But now for the first time, this country has a cabinet secretary who is indigenous. I come from ancestors who endured the horrors of Indian boarding school assimilation policies carried out by the same department that I now lead. The same agency that tried to eradicate our culture, our language, our spiritual practices and our people. To address the intergenerational impact of Indian boarding schools, and to promote spiritual and emotional healing in our communities, we must shed light on the unspoken traumas of the past, no matter how hard it will be. For more than a century, the Interior Department was responsible for operating the Indian boarding schools across the United States and its territories. We are therefore uniquely positioned to assist in the effort to recover the dark history of these institutions that have haunted our families for too long it's our responsibility. Today, I'm announcing and sharing with you all, first, that the department will launch the Federal Indian Boarding School Initiative. At no time in history have the records or documentation of this policy been compiled or analyzed to determine the full scope of its reaches and effects. We must uncover the truth about the loss of human life and the lasting consequences of these schools. This investigation will identify past boarding school facilities and sites, the location of known and possible burial sites located at or near school facilities, and the identities and tribal affiliations of children who were taken there. I know that this process will be long and difficult. I know that this process will be painful. It won't undo the heartbreak and loss that so many of us feel. But only by acknowledging the past can we work toward a future that we're all proud to embrace. I don't see it as my role to be the voice for all Native people, but rather to amplify your voices so that American Indian, Alaska Native, and Native Hawaiian communities have a seat at the table to speak for themselves. Hey guys and gals, it's your buddy Drew from Living History's Mysteries and Ferocious Feline Productions. You know, a lot of times history wasn't pretty. There was no end in sight. I know I try to keep our videos entertaining. I try to even make them fun at times. Sometimes you run across something that's not fun. It's not funny. It's actually very heart-wrenching, disgusting, troubling, to say the least. I 
I'm not going to go into a lot of detail. I'm going to let you guys check it out and let you form your own opinion. Definitely, definitely comment about your feelings about the subject matter. We'll talk at the end. Haslahel Sitsayotsa Sitsa Twelchaf Dothlelep. Good afternoon, dear relatives. My traditional name is Sitsayotsa. I'm a member of the Tulalip tribes from the state of Washington. I serve as the National Native American Boarding School Healing Coalition Chief Executive as a Chief Executive Officer. It is an honor to stand with Secretary Deb Holland, Assistant Secretary Brian Newland, and boarding school survivor Jim LaBelle Sr. to commemorate the release of the historical work of this Department of Interior and the National Native American Boarding School Healing Coalition on Indian Boarding Schools. This is a historic moment at as it reaffirms the stories we all grew up with, the truth of our people, and the often immense torture our elders and ancestors went through as children at the hands of the federal government and the religious institutions. The impacts of boarding schools are still with us today. Our children had names. Our children had families. Our children had their own languages. Our children had their own regalia, prayers, and religion before Indian boarding schools violently took them away. The United States operated, wielded assimilative education programs from the early 1800s to 1969. Nearly 200 years of forced labor, displacing native peoples from their usual and accustomed territories. Removal of their spirit, taking away their traditional foods and making them pay with their lives as native children. After generations, we still do not know how many children attended, how many children died, and or how many children were permanently scarred for life because of these federal institutions. But we are grateful to stand today with an administration who is willing to find out the truth and help us put names to the unmarked graves that cover at least 37 states. This report is foundation, a foundational step in what we know will open the doors for deeper engagement and more robust opportunities for truth seeking. Our, our recent collaborative work with the US Department of the Interior has identified 408 federally funded and supported US Indian boarding schools, as well as 89 additional boarding schools that received no federal funding at all. Over two centuries, these 497 boarding schools operated as a broad system with a singular goal aimed at our children to strip us of our languages, identities, and cultures. These lifeways that have connected us to the land since time immemorial. We must investigate beyond the Department of Interior Federal Indian Boarding School Initiative and compile all previous research and bring together partners for a comprehensive review of federal boarding school policies and their impacts. We must expand upon the great work of the Department of Interior Initiative to know the magnitude of loss of human life. 
This is why we need HR 5444 and Senate Bill 2907, the Truth and Healing Commission on Indian Boarding School Policies Act. We must be able to locate church and government records beyond the Department of Interior's reach. The commission would locate and analyze all records on Indian boarding schools. The commission would have the power to issue subpoenas to produce records that are targeted to attendance, infirmary, deaths, land, and other correspondence related to boarding schools. We must provide survivors the opportunity to testify and to tell their story as a child of boarding schools and document ongoing impacts from boarding schools. We must understand the full history. The full history of intergenerational trauma and how it relates to natives with regards to current impacts on physical health, mental health, spiritual health, and the health of our community. Our children deserve to be found. Our children deserve to be brought home. We are here for their justice and we will not stop advocating until the United States fully accounts for the genocide committed against Native children. The time is now. Tiguitzid, Kaichka, Bisha, Miigwech. Thanking you in our languages and praying that our languages come back with, with as much love and strength as our ancestors spoke them. Thank you. At this time, I have the great honor of introducing you to James Zobel Sr., the first vice president of the National Native American Boarding School Healing Coalition, and also a boarding school survivor. Very important story that we need to hear. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Deborah Holland, Secretary, uh, my fellow elders. Thank you. It's. Um, I was born in an era when Alaska was still a territory, and um, the federal government had total sway over the entire uh, territory at the time, including its 229 villages, uh, which later became known as tribes. And I want you to know that um, Alaska Native people experience a very similar um, kinds of acculturation and assimilation that occurred in the lower 48 states uh, with the with the Western expansion, and this came through uh, a guy by the name of Sheldon Jackson, a a, uh, a Presbyterian minister in the 1880s, uh, who was a very fine admirer of uh, Colonel Henry Pratt, and uh, so consequently, a lot of the BIA schools in Alaska are modeled after the one in Carlisle. In fact, uh, many children, many early children that went to boarding school uh, in Carlisle came from Alaska. And uh, some of them are still there and we wanna take, bring them home. Um, <clears throat> I'm a product of uh, 10 years of boarding school myself, uh, going in at the age of uh, eight years old. My, my brother was six and uh, I went to two BIA boarding schools, uh, Wrangell Institute and uh, Monachcombe High School. 
And uh, I learned everything about the European American culture, its history, language, civilizations, math, science. But I didn't know anything about who I was as a native person. I came out not knowing who I was. And I will share that more in detail uh, tomorrow. But what I want to say, um, the, the echoes of the boarding school era, even though it's, it ceased or stopped in many places, the vestiges of it is still continuing on today, especially with our high incarceration, incarceration rates of Native people across America. Uh, in Alaska, we have maybe 18% of uh, the state's population but we are 40% in the criminal justice system. Likewise, 60% uh, of our children that are in foster care in Alaska are Alaska Native children. And 60%. And these are just but some examples of some of the uh, uh, visual things of historical trauma in boarding school. We also have the highest suicide rates in America, uh, murders and suicides and domestic violence. And uh, we're still having to deal with those things today. Welcome back. You know, it's like I was saying at the beginning, there are times that history, it isn't pretty, it isn't, it isn't what a lot of us today would like to think about our ancestors, about how people were treated about a largely shared philosophy. The Indian boarding schools were an atrocity. They were there's no words. There's no words. A lot of you guys that have been with me for the longest time know that when my family came to America in 1754, we partook in the last few years of the French and Indian War. And it was during that time that members of my family married in to the Mohawk Nation. That's how the Ellsworth Protestant Church got burned down because the partitioners didn't like a daughter of the minister marrying in, being allowed to marry in to a Native American tribe when the whole purpose was to move them away from their heathenistic ways and into Christianity. This just recently came out in the last few years from the Mohawk Nation in Ontario, which for those of you that know your history know that Joseph Brandt left the area of the Susquehannas in upper New York State and took several Mohawk up into Ontario. Uh, this is from the Ontario branch of the Mohawk Nation. 
and we're gonna we're gonna end with this. Um, until next time, take care of yourselves. Take care of each other. God bless you. God love you. We do. And we'll see you out there. Under our jurisdiction, and we will not allow.